when he lost in the Ripple case, he doubled down. He's doubling down. He's not going to step back and be like, hmm, maybe we got it wrong. Maybe uh, we should revisit our theory or uh, no. It's like, okay, we'll appeal it. Let's, let's sue them all. Like that's his mentality. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which is a great crypto platform that I've been using since 2018. Uphold has all the top cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and all the altcoins. In fact, they have 260 plus cryptocurrencies on their platform. You can also trade precious metals, stable coins, and 37 fiat currencies. In addition, they are available in over 150 countries. And this platform is fully reserved. They do audits. So you can trust that your funds are safe. No commingling, no lending out your funds. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. With me today is attorney John Deaton, who is the founder of Deaton Law Firm, CryptoLaw.us or Crypto-Law.us, and the author of Food Stamp Warrior. John, welcome back. Thanks, Tony. It's always great to be with you, brother. Appreciate it. For sure, John. Uh, we've been talking for years, man, um, and things... <laughs> It's, yeah. like, it's like we're brothers, man. <laughs> yeah, what a journey, right? Uh, and there's so many things that have escalated since then. You know, we started talking about Ripple and XRP back in the day. Now the SEC is attacking everything that they can uh, put, you know, point at. And it's pretty crazy what's happening. So I want to start with uh, well, Ripple. Let me, let me interrupt you real quick sure. right here, because if people rewind the clock, when I first got on your show, you know, over two plus years ago, we talked about that. We talked about how the Ripple case, uh, the danger was that the industry was just thinking it was a one-off, right? And that this was just a Ripple thing. And I and you, we, we talked about the allegations and how those same allegations and the complaint applied to Cardano or to ETH or to Algo or anything. We, we actually talked about that and said, you know, that we have to assume it's a war on crypto. And so I just want to remind your audience that uh, that uh, you and I were talking about that, you know, two years ago. So some of them caught up with us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you were spot on, John. Uh, it was an attack on crypto. I remember you clearly stating that many times. And now, boy, everybody's a target. Cardano, you name it. Any, any, anything on the top 50 <laughs> market cap. I mean, really Stay everything. There. You know, uh, everything is. And, uh, you know, I know that XRP community, um, everyone has their view about Ethereum because of the free pass and everything. But, you know, the reality is um, uh, the SEC granted an, S, uh, uh, an ETH futures ETF. And so um, unless they're going to rescind that, you know, um, Larry Fink, a BlackRock has applied for an, a spot Ethereum ETF. And so anything outside those two in XRP, everything else under that is um, is fair game. And we got a division now. We got the CFTC chair coming out saying most of crypto are commodities. And we got Gary Gensler saying everything is a security. So, you know, your podcast is a security. He just, by the way, <laughs> my, 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 my brass knuckle necklace is a security under Gary Gensler's approach. Everything, man. It's, it's ridiculous at this point. So let's talk about the Ripple case. Um, because last we heard, uh, the SEC had dropped the case against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. Um, I was hearing or seeing some things online about certain dates coming up, I think possibly this week or next week. Tell us the latest there and, wh and what can we expect next? Yeah, well, really understand you're right. So um, the only thing that was pending before there can be an appeal that goes to the Second Circuit or even the U.S. Supreme Court related to the judge's summary judgment decision, there was the case against Brad Garling House, Chris Larson. Uh, I was on your show. I was saying, as was other people, that it was the weakest case ever. The SEC was going to lose it. Uh, and the SEC, instead of losing it, um, said they tapped out, right? They they just said, we're not going to win. Plus, it would allow a lot of testimony, right? 
Bill Hinman or someone may have been tried and uh, called as a witness. And the SEC wanted to tap out from all that, drop the case. And so we're in the penalty phase. And if people remember in the library case, uh, there was the summary judgment. And then there was what is the appropriate remedy? And so the judge basically said um, exchange sales are not securities sales. The sales or the gifting or giving XRP to developers or for other people, that type of transaction is not a security. And that the only ones that that did were ones that had written contracts with institutions. And those are really in the early years. Now, they add up to a lot of money, right, because the judge included ODL sales. And so it came to like $770 million. And so what Ripple's going to be doing, uh, the SEC is going to do is say, we want every sale to every institution to include. Ripple's going to say, well, wait a minute. Um, these transactions shouldn't be included. So let's take an ODL transaction. If the person only um, used XRP and owned it for a matter of seconds, and then resold it, you know, Ripple will take another stab at saying to the judge, look, that they weren't relying on us. That was a utility transaction. Right. right? And, and and that should be excluded. Ripple will say also that um, there were exemptions. So if you're an accredited investor, I can sell you a security, right? You don't have to go register it because there's an exemption. Well, those institutions, by definition, are accredited investors. So Ripple's going to say, look at all these sales, Judge. They are exempt from Section 5 registration. And, you know, out of that $770 million, I don't know how much that adds up to, right? But, you know, Ripple's just going to knock it down, knock it down, knock it down. And if the judge accepts all that, then she will decide what's an appropriate remedy. So what they're doing is they're engaging in like briefs could be due. I didn't check to see exactly what's due, but it's going to be discovery matters. Someone could get deposed again related to institutional sales that have taken place since the lawsuit was filed. Uh, the SEC is going to like be aggressive, trying to get a pound of flesh Ripple's going to offer evidence. There'll be briefs filed. There'll be maybe an oral argument, maybe not. There was in the library case. Um, XRP holders won't participate in any of that uh, if they were curious, because that's just about Ripple and, mm -hmm. you know, Ripple's sales and whether or not Ripple should pay 10 million or a hundred million or whatever. And we don't take a stand in that. You know, we were there to say, we got what we wanted, right? XRP is not a security. And when I buy it on an exchange on Coinbase or Uphold or Kraken, I'm not buying an illegal security. We got what we wanted. So we really won't be participating. So to be fair, that was all my whole goal from day one. And so I'm not as involved now. I'm not watching the docket and, and all those things and trying to figure out what's exactly due. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. You know what I mean, but but that's where we're at. We're going to find out. What's the appropriate. Yeah, you know, uh, Tony, I know I, I should let you know and your viewers know that we're in a little bit of a storm status. Okay. Uh, I, I can, you froze up on me, so uh, you might have a, a, a big job editing this one because of the <laughs> because of the wind and everything that's taking place here in uh, Rhode Island. No problem. Um, so regarding these institutional sales that Ripple did, does that include international sales or, uh, or is it just- oh, Great question. Great question. That and, and I should have brought that up. So thank you for asking that. No, there's a Supreme Court case called Morrison. And it basically says that the SEC only has jurisdiction over the United States. And so let's think about this for a minute. XRP in Japan and in Singapore and in the United Arab Emirates and in Switzerland and in the UK, their regulatory body has determined that XRP is not a security. 
So when Ripple sells in Japan, it's got nothing to do with the United States. And on top of that, it's not a security there. Like they have clarity for a long time. So Ripple is going to say yes. So that's a great point because I don't know what the figure is, but let's say um, uh, there's 700 million and Ripple can show that 700 uh, and 50 out of the 770 took place outside the U.S. Well, now we're down to 20 million. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I don't know what the numbers are, but we did hear that. I know the personal sales of Brad Garlinghouse, uh, 95% were done overseas, right? He didn't do it in the United States. So they were excluded. They were arguing. So if Ripple really did do like 90, 95% of all their XRP sales um, outside the U.S., then, you know, that number. And I, I want people to think about that, Tony. I'm so glad you brought that question up because let's say that Ripple's, let's say 90, 95% sales are outside the United States. And let's say Ripple is allowed to deduct all their business expenses, all that. And let's say when all push comes to shove that the judge finds Ripple $10 million. They spent $200 million to defend the case. And at the end of the day, the SEC gets $10 million. I mean, that could happen. Right. And you talk about in a non-fraud case, you talk about a colossal waste of resources and money and time when Sam Bankman Freed is out there and Machinsky's out there and Do Kwan's out there and, and you know, Hinman's out there and Clayton <laughs> out there, all the bad guys in crypto. I'm just saying that um, uh, it's just it's it's depressing. Like it's. Yeah. It's 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 disgusting is 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 the better word and so yeah it that could happen that could happen and would Ripple be able to get any fees reimbursement of their legal fees from the SEC? No, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, it's just not going to happen. Like I know people feel passionate about that, uh, but no, the, the, the Ripple the judge found that Ripple violated the law. Okay, she found that she said that, you know, she took this 1946 case and she applied it and she said, okay, technically now that doesn't mean she wants to punish Ripple. Right. Because I don't think she does. And so it's not like a punitive damages thing. But but uh, in our system, uh, the way it works is the loser uh, doesn't have to pay the winners fees like in, in in overseas in places it's like whoever wins gets the other's attorney's fees mm-hmm. in america we we you know we don't do that because we it would discourage lawsuits and people they would be more hesitant to bring something because if they lose they'd have to pay everyone's expenses but but the government did get you know a a partial victory and so there's no basis to ask for uh, legally to ask for fees. Hi, everyone. Pardon the interruption. I'm Tony Edward, the founder and host of the Thinking Crypto podcast. I have a huge favor to ask you. If you haven't subscribed as yet on YouTube or the podcast platforms, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, hit the notification bell on the YouTube platform and on Spotify or Apple or wherever you get your podcasts, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast. It allows me to bring great quality content to you. Thank you for your support and I'll let you get back to the content. Mm, That makes sense. So uh, we're expecting this case to wrap up in 2024. Um, Do you think the SEC has any ability to do any type of appeal? Do you think it will get to that point? Well, sure. Uh, both sides have a right to appeal. Still, uh, let's say that um, let's say that uh, the judge says no. I'm going to not exclude ODL cells. They're included, and you owe fifty million. I'm just picking numbers. Okay. Ripple could appeal that part of it. Like they could say the only part we're appealing is the L trans transactions though the judge committed decision is over regardless of what the judge decides whether it's one million or a hundred million a uh, fine for ripple the sec can appeal to the second circuit saying judge torres 
was wrong that XRP is a security and that XRP on exchanges are still securities, blah, blah, blah. Now, I want everyone to know, I have to remind them because this is such a nuanced issue. If the SEC were to appeal that decision, right, and they were to win, which they won't, in my opinion, so let me make that clear, that doesn't mean that the SEC, that the case is over and the SEC won. Mm. Because what the judge did was brilliant, in my opinion. I call it appeal proof, right? She said, when it comes to exchanges in XRP, um, because of the transaction and because XRP holders, she relied on our affidavits, many of them didn't even know who Ripple existed at the time that they couldn't rely on the efforts of Ripple, right? If you don't know that Ripple exists, how do you rely on them? If you don't know that it's Ripple selling it to you, how do you rely on them? So she said, the third prong of Howie is not satisfied. Mm. And since you have to satisfy all the prongs, I'm not, I don't have to apply the first and the second prong. I don't even have to do that analysis because the third prong doesn't apply. So all that would happen is if the SEC appeals it, and if the SEC were to win, the Second Circuit would send it back to Judge Torres and say, okay, we overrule you on the third prong. Now go back and apply the other two prongs. And then she could turn around and say, common enterprise wasn't satisfied, rule back to ripple. And then it would go back up on appeal, right? And I believe she would do that because the common enterprise factor, to me, is even worse for the SEC than the third prong. Mm -hmm. So the reality is the ruling we got is the law for the foreseeable future for the next couple of years. And I think it, it's I personally believe she will not be overruled on appeal. And I'll you, come back on your show and eat my words <laughs> if I'm wrong, because I'll stand by it. But that's how I feel. I've been right so far. I think I'm going to be right again. For sure. And and do you feel uh, potentially a settlement could be in the works? Is that still on the table? I mean, I don't think so. Right. But that's just me guessing. And, and, and to be fair to the audience, the uh, listener uh, who's thinking, they think settlement is on the table is just as good as me, right? Their opinion is no better than mine. Um, but the SEC is in this war. So if you're in the middle of the war and you're going after Coinbase and you're going after Kraken mm. and you're going after Binance and you're saying that uh, Algo's security and you're saying that Cardano's a security and you're saying that these businesses are illegal, then how do you thread the needle with Ripple, right? It's You could, you could, but it just, Gensler doesn't seem to, it's all war. It's scorched earth policy. We're in war. Elizabeth Warren just initiated that bill. It bans Bitcoin in the United States, yeah. right? It, it 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 tries to it says that validating nodes have to comply with anti money laundering policy. So software code with nodes out there in the world have to you know how do you know your customer if you're just a transaction you know you're validating a transaction on a, on a decentralized ledger you can't so that's why it's a de facto ban and. Um, is, is the SEC going to say, okay, well, let's come to grips and agree that um, XRP uh, sold on exchanges is not a security, but Cardano is. Yeah. So I don't see it, you know, and um, the only thing that I see causing the settlement is if Coinbase wins their motion to dismiss or partially wins it. That's the only thing. Otherwise, it's going to be, it's still a war, man. We're in the middle of a war. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So let's talk about Coinbase because um, I think it was just yesterday or this weekend, uh, the SEC denied Coinbase's petition for crypto rules. Um, and then Coinbase 
decided to sue them <laughs> as a result. And yeah. we know the SEC is suing Coinbase. Um, I feel like this is almost as far as caliber of the opponent you're taking on that the SEC is taking on Coinbase has assets. <laughs> they have capital, they have a legal team. What, what do you think happens there? Well, listen, I thought that I thought it would be very difficult to ever match Ripple's legal team. Mm. You know, quite frankly, I mean, Ripple's legal team is, you know, stellar former SEC chief counsels, directors of enforcement, uh, director of corporation finance, chairwoman of the SEC, yeah. right? Uh, and it was impressive. And and Coinbase may not have exactly like the names of, you know, they do have some of that too. But yeah, I mean, they're at least equally as, as impressive as if the Ripple team and, and, and Coinbase is all in now. Like they're all in that they whether you like coinbase or not as a customer or all that let's regardless of that they have been more compliant and have 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 not done the things that others have done to try to get bigger um than any other company and they they were out there begging the sec for guidance like we want to be a good corporate citizen and i'm not a spokesperson for i know i just sounded like one right <laughs> uh for, for coinbase i'm a customer and and i i i like paul ruel his the the chief legal officer i've interviewed him i think he's a great guy yeah. i like brian armstrong i know a lot of people don't i I don't see anything wrong with them. I know a lot of people disagree with me, um, but I mean, they went to the, I just want people to think about if you're a business and you're trying to do the right thing, they went to the SEC, Tony, and said, Hey, we're going to list XRP, but we won't, we won't if you tell us not to. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they, they list XRP. They promote the hell out of XRP with USDC, Back in those days, they're expanding their cross-border payments with XRP. And then, you know, less than 18 months later, Coinbase has to delist XRP because they don't want to run a file. They don't have to, but they chose to because they're trying to play nice, which Kraken did, you know, like, and and I, I want people out there, you know, because I just thought of Kraken and and I know that you want to talk about like they they paid 50 million. Right. Yeah. And now they get sued anyways. And and uh, listen, I was someone who said to all the exchanges when Ripple was sued, join me in the motion to intervene. Like I was out there saying, I know that no one else is advising you this way and I'm being super aggressive. That's why I'm not <laughs> a chief legal officer to anyone. Right. Because I'm I'm too aggressive, maybe. But I was like, this is what you should do. Trust me, they're coming after you, right? And and so a lot of people be like, well, shame on Kraken and they should have joined. Listen, you got a company to run. You got employees. Right. And if I'm Jesse Powell, who was the CEO at the time, this is what your, your, your um, legal advisors are telling you. They're like, okay, well, we're learning from the Ripple case that we're going to need to come up with 100 Two hundred million dollars to fight, mm -hmm. and uh, this is our insurance issue. We're going to have to self fund it, a lot of it, if not all of it. So we could go that route and lay off twenty five percent of our people, maybe to never bring them back, or we could pay this fifty million dollar fine and like move forward and adjust our staking thing and blah, blah. So, you know, it's a tough position to be in. There's all, right. I want people to know that uh, because I see a lot of, you know, criticism of, uh, of that decision and that, you know, but it's understandable, man. Like it's a tough, it's a tough decision. I mean, you're, you're, you're a smart guy, but you're also a guy with uh, uh, and you're a passionate guy. You're a guy that's ready to fight. But if if you had you know your employees and you got to, someone's got their mortgage payment and now you got to lay them off, it, if you're a good person, man, it, it, it'll affect you. You know what I'm saying? It'll oh yeah, it's, it's it's a very tough spot to be in. To your point, uh, running a business and trying to keep the, the business operating, right? There's expenses and, and like you said, you have 
people who have families and, and their jobs and so forth. Uh, but John, isn't it wild that the SEC approved Coinbase to go public, now is suing them. Kraken, they they did a settlement. Hey, hey, stop your staking, you know, and pay us the $50 million. Now a year later, hey, Kraken, come back here. We got some stuff to discuss. What the hell is that? I, I don't understand what's going on here. Well, I, A, I just think it's greed. And I think that the SEC knew at the time, I believe that they knew they were going to come after Kraken anyways. Uh, I really do. And they got there as much as they could. They weakened it. I mean, Kraken paid $50 million. Right. They weakened Kraken financially to be able to defend their themselves. That's fifty million that could have went to defending the case and 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 pursuing uh, an aggressive strategy or whatnot. And so uh, it was a very uh, you know diabolical thing. And it, this people have got to understand. I realize that Gary Gensler is the most hated man in crypto, and and I understand that. But you can't underestimate him. Hmm. Like, you know, yes, I was someone who said we will win in court because I had faith that the courts will follow the Constitution and they will see this gross overreach. Right. And that the their unconstitutional expansion of Howie into the secondary markets and all that kind of stuff. Those are my thoughts will win. But um but he he's he's like the mad genius and uh, diabolical and yeah let's get our fifty million we're probably coming back for them later um, and you know also he's not the kind of guy and I've I've talked to people who have I've never been in the room with Gensler but I have talked to and interviewed lawyers who have been in the room with Gensler. Hmm. He is a megalomaniac who walks in and lets you know he's the smartest man in the room, right, uh, immediately. But when he lost in the Ripple case, he doubled down. He's doubling down. He's not going to step back and be like, hmm, maybe we got it wrong. Or maybe uh, we should revisit our theory or uh no it's like okay we'll appeal it let's let's sue them all like that's his mentality wow. and um and i think people have got to accept that um we're in the biggest part of the war right now the war the biggest part of the war wasn't the ripple case mm. you know that was the beginning of the war that's what that was that was the beginning of the war um this introduction by Elizabeth Warren of a bill that 20% of the Senate already agrees with. So I just want you to know that there are a hundred senators, one out of five minimum are ready to ban crypto hmm. in the United States of America. One out of five right now. Now, everyone out there, Tony's like, Oh, she's put 600 bills and none of them pass and, and it'll never pass the financial services committee. And I agree her bill will not pass next year, but there is going to be no bill next year. This is the long game. Right. If, if and she's creating the narrative, yeah. the narrative. And what we're at risk is, is some of her language being put into a subsequent bill, an infrastructure bill, a, this, any thoughts you had on the the debt box situation where the judge came out and said, uh, you know, they would potentially issue a, a sanction against the SEC lawyers, if, if that's right? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing everybody needs to understand. The SEC has dug themselves. You know how I just said to you that Gensler doubled down after the ripple verdict uh, decision. He's going to go all in against crypto. He doesn't care. The SEC is almost as though every time they get chastised by a judge or criticized, they circle the wagons around themselves even more. Uh, I've never seen an agency with a bunch of lawyers that lack, you know, ethics, in my opinion. It is institutionalized. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I used to just think it was a, 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 
a handful of lawyers. You know, lawyers want to be they they're competitive. They want to win. And so and they're against crypto. These guys feel and gals feel insulated. They feel like somehow uh, they're above the law. They don't care if a judge says that they lack allegiance to the law. I mean, in, in my years, I've, if a judge said to me, even if even if I didn't like the judge, even if I disagree with the judge, but if a judge questioned my honor, questioned my integrity, that said that like I didn't give a shit about the law and that I'm a hypocrite, I, I might say, you know what, maybe I'm too emotional, maybe I'm too personal, like I let something get ahead of my, it, it would cause you pause. These guys don't, man. And so in that debt box, what your audience might not know is that the the SEC went in a temporary restraining order. So what you need to know about that, Tony, is that the other side isn't there. That's when I get to go to a judge if I want to get a temporary restraining order against Tony and you're my neighbor and you and I are in some dispute, but I go to the judge and I don't let you know I'm going to the judge and I tell the judge all these lies about you and then the judge shuts you down, right, uh, and, and causes some kind of damage to you. That's what happened. They went in and told the judge that if he didn't freeze the assets uh, of debt box, then they were, he had to do that because they were closing bank accounts and moving the money overseas. And that if he didn't grant this injunction and shut them down and, and freeze the, uh, oh, the whole thing, customers would lose money forever. Mm. And it was all not true, you know, and so what ended up happening is that the banks, because of Gensler's uh, and Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto policy, the banks were like saying, hey, we don't want to do business with crypto companies. Hmm. So it's the banks saying we don't want to do business anymore. you got to close the account, not the company. And so the question is, did the SEC – just assume like they didn't investigate they didn't ask they saw banks closing accounts so they went in and assumed and told the judge but they were just wrong like they were recklessly wrong or did they know for sure and lie to the judge and the judge's position was it doesn't matter whether you are recklessly disregarding the truth or you are intentionally misleading the court, that deserves sanctions. And so the judge is contemplating issuing sanctions against the individual attorneys who the judge feels misled the court. And it caused irreparable damage to this company. I mean, you, you freeze your assets. I mean, checks start bouncing, brother. Like, you know, if, uh, if uh, you know, your uh, your business, if, if, if the bank accounts and everything got frozen, you know, checks, employees, payroll, everything shut down. And so, you know, I think it's, I'm glad you brought out that box because it, it shows you where we are. We have an out of control SEC that I believe in my heart needs to be completely reformed. Not just the laws and trying to apply 1930s laws to the modern day world. I mean, that's of course needs to take place, but fundamentally changing the SEC, uh, its mission, its priorities, things like that. Uh, shutting down the revolving door, how you can, how you can, you know, be overseeing, you know, this industry, and then all of a sudden you're cashing out and and being hired by the same companies that that you were just regulating like all that's got to change or or we're doomed yeah you're right and i'm hoping you know i think congressman warren davidson's restructuring plan on bill i i think that makes sense i, I don't know what's the likelihood of it getting pushed through anytime soon but I yeah i mean not sense. obviously not with the uh, the democrats in charge of the senate and, and all that but you know what it does is it starts creating the narrative. So I, I, it's not that it will pass, but should the chairman, 
you know, not have as much power as the chairman does should, you know, listen, I'm all for transparency, right? I think that their, I think that their vote, when they vote, it should be made public immediately. Yeah. Like I, we should get to see what the vote is when it happens. If, if they voted three to two to sue Coinbase and it was Gensler and the two Dem- then just do it. Why you got to wait to afterwards? The, <laughs> the, 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 the calendars, who Gensler is meeting. We don't have to make it real time because you want to worry about people's safety, but it should be released within 24 hours. So if Gary Gensler met with Sam Bankman Freed on Monday, Maybe we don't know that's happening on Monday, but we should know Tuesday that he met the day before. And John, I'm hoping that Patrick McHenry, I know he announced his retirement. He still has a year that he follows this subpoena. And I think that further weakens Gary Genser. I think we need to expose that. But will they act is the big question. Um, you know. Yeah, the- it's, it's shocking to me that, uh, that the Financial Services Committee has never subpoenaed the SEC. I mean, to me, that's a sad statement of our politics. How do you conduct oversight? Yeah. Like, right. And how, how, if, if you say to Gary Gensler, Hey, we want to see the meeting notes between you and Sam Bankman Freed. How can Congress not get that? Like you oversee them and he could just ignore you and, and you can threaten subpoenas all you want. But I think it's because he thinks Gensler is going to ignore the subpoena. Hmm. And then he, you know, he loses like if he ignores the subpoena, then, you know, you're going into court to enforce the subpoena. And, and then maybe the threat of the subpoena is um is less of a threat because now you can ignore it. I don't know, but let me tell you something. I mean, they have a sheriff over there. Uh, I'd be a hell of a lot more aggressive if it was me and I would take them to court. Yeah. Um, and I, I would force them to honor the subpoena. I would get a Supreme court justice or the second circuit district court. Of Col- I mean, uh, in Columbia, they oversee the SEC. I'd get a court order saying against her must comply with this. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm hoping they do that, John. Uh, I, I think the industry needs it, and and the SEC is just out of control. A final question here before I let you go. Um, yeah. Are you are you planning to be amicus in any other cases? Uh, anything you're looking at? Yeah. Well, I uh, we have in the Coinbase case. Um, there are. Um, I have a form out. We've got over five thousand. I haven't aggressively pushed it. You know, I don't think we're going to get 75000 again, you know, like we did with XRP holders. I think the XRP community is pretty unique uh, community worldwide. And But I think that uh, we certainly can get a couple more thousand uh, probably. If Coinbase loses the motion to dismiss, which is on January 17th, that's the next big day in crypto, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. If they lose that, then there'll be a they'll move forward with the rest of the case, just like the ripple case went down. It'll take a couple of years. There'll be depositions and, and all of that kind of stuff. And then eventually there'll be motions for summary judgment. And I'll be, I would participate on behalf of Coinbase customers just to make sure that the, the regular customer's voice is heard. What we don't want is the SEC going in saying, we filed this lawsuit on behalf of Coinbase customers, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and and we don't necessarily want Coinbase to speak for us either, right? We wow. want to we want to say, hey, this is this is uh, this is our voice. Have our own voice heard. So so that is um, a case that uh, I'll be involved in probably if it moves forward. I'm hoping that uh, Judge Falia shocks. Uh, the SEC and grants at least partially their summary, their uh, motion for dis- to dismiss. Mm. John, always great stuff, my friend. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Tony. Be well, brother.